welcome to another segment of Medical Media Kenya. In this segment, we are going to talk about cancer, which is a rising condition in the world and also in this country. In the show today, I'm joined by Dr. Nathan Anjichi. He's a senior medical officer at Tenek Hospital in Bomet. Uh, we are really honored to have you on the show today. Thank Karim. you. Thank Dr. Uh, kindly tell us more about yourself so that our viewers can be uh, can know you more and get ready to get the information that you're going to put forward for us. So my name is Nathan Anjichi. I'm a medical officer working in Tenek Hospital. I've been working here for the last four years. I'm currently in the medical inpatient and outpatient department where we see all patients with uh, medical related conditions and cancer being one of them. So I'm glad to be here to share with you a few thoughts on cancer. Just to start off, uh, what is cancer and how can someone know that they have cancer? Yeah, so thank you for the question. So cancer is a state of the body where cells begin to grow and divide out of control. Now when they grow and divide out of control, they make it hard for the body to manage the cells. So cells are really the smallest unit in the body and when cells come together they form a tissue and, and then they form organs of the various body. So that means there are various cells in the body which can grow abnormally. So cancer can happen in the various cells of the body, both in blood and also in the, soul, the other organs of the body. So it really can affect any part of the body. And uh, initially, as we, from the definition, there are times when it is a slow process. So there's an abnormality in the way cells would multiply, and in it, which means there would be no symptoms initially. But with time, we can have non-specific symptoms. For example, one of the symptoms can just be tired, if someone is just tired or because the cells are, that are being produced are not functional. They're not able to meet the demands of the body. So they're just feeling tired. And then the other symptoms that they can have is bleeding because as cells accumulate and grow, because they are not normal in their function, then it gets to have bleeding and dysfunction of the cells. And the other thing, people can just lose weight because they are feeding well, but they are not able to sustain the growth of the cells which are there. And depending on the location of the cell of the cancer, you can have abnormal lumps of growth in the body, and in the, ab in the abdomen, in the chest, in the skin, or just various parts. Yeah. So I would at this point also like to say that cancer is not one disease, yeah, about 200 different types of diseases. So really we cannot have a specific symptoms for 200 diseases. So the various parts of the body, various cells, various organs, and each organ also has different types of cancer. So thank you so much for that uh, elaborate uh, description about cancer and the symptoms. So we know cancer is a big condition and uh, the main thing that people may want to know is uh, how can I get help? So cancer, cancer is, a, is a main threat to Kenya because uh, according to the Ministry of Health, we have the is number three killer of the infectious diseases like TB, malaria, HIV, and cardiovascular diseases. So infectious number one, cardiovascular number two, and cancer number three. So really that is an issue of concern to everyone who's watching and listening that we are involved with ourselves and our families. So we really need to see how best can we address it in regard to early diagnosis. And uh, one of the things that we can do is screening, because initially we have no symptoms. And uh, screening means that we go to a health facility without any symptoms. So we go and ask for a checkup, we get our weight checked, our blood pressure and everything, and ask, we ask if there are certain symptoms which are there. And uh, the importance of screening, it is directly proportional to the curability. What I'm saying is, the earlier we get cancer, and the shorter duration of the symptoms, the likely we are to treat it. So if symptoms have been there for a while, uh, then it's unlikely you are going to, to treat it and cure it. And if symptoms have been there for long, for many months or years, then that also means that our likelihood of treating it and curing it are also low. So my advice would be to try and get screening early. There are various screening recommendations, especially, for example, for we young women, one of the things they need to do is to get a pap smear and uh, at least they have a check for cervical cancer. They can also get breast exams. And uh, once they're more than 40 years, they can do colonoscopies for females and uh, other types of cancers, depending on the risk factors that they have. 
for males, our important one is uh, prostate cancer, which is recommended to do after once someone is more than 40 years, then they need to do a prostate, at least an exam and some blood test which can be done. You can also do colonoscopy, which is putting a camera through the colon and see if there is any growth there. There are other more difficult cancers, like esophageal cancer screening has not been, we don't have a proper way of screening them. We also have other blood cancers and uh, which, which are, are just difficult to screen. But with proper checkup, going to the hospital, doing lab, then we hope that as we do this step by step, we'll be able to at least get the cancers done. The other important one is um, the cervical cancer vaccine called the HPV, human papilloma virus. So this virus is implicated in cervical cancer. So it's been rolled out by the Ministry of Health. And we want to urge the young girls between 9 and 12 years to go and get that vaccine. Because they may not have symptoms, but we are not looking at this girl as a 9 or 12 year old girl. We are looking at them when they get to their 40s. Okay, it will have reduced significantly their risk of getting cancer. Uh, we'd like you to tell us more about these different diagnostic methods mm -hmm. and also the different treatment modalities that are used for cancer. Yeah. Yeah. So, before I come to diagnosis and the treatment modality, I think I'll just like to mention something about the risk factors and uh, what are some of the things which would dispose someone to getting cancer and after that we can talk about diagnosis and then treatment. I, I think the approach which we can, we can have uh, as people who are, as you even look at the other episodes in Medical Media Kenya, there, there are various things which keep coming up. And one of the things that is heavy nowadays is the non-communicable diseases. And uh, this is the opposite of communicable. Communicable means I mean, like TB or malaria or an infection which can come from one person to another. But in the non-communicable, it means there are individual factors which predispose someone to get that particular disease. And uh, the huge ones are cardiovascular diseases, mental illnesses, for example, and cancer. So you've already had an episode on mental health before. You've had one on diabetes, hypertension, and now we have cancer. So what these non-communicable diseases have in common is there are several things which can be done and would dramatically reduce the risk of developing all of them. For example, things like diet. That a proper diet, a nutritious diet with fruits and vegetables, for example, would reduce the risk of hypertension and diabetes and cancer, some different types of cancer, and also mental health. So diet is an important one, and fruits and vegetables. You also have things like exercise, physical activity, avoiding obesity, which all help in ensuring someone is physically fit and then once they are fit, then their body and the cells will just grow and multiply, divide in, in the appropriate way. Things like smoking, avoidance of smoking has been shown to reduce the risk of certain types of cancers. Alcohol, the more the alcohol you use, it just with a disordered metabolism in the body and alcohol is a risk factor for cancer. So. And we also have some environmental pollutants and contaminants, things we, we can try and see, even as we advocate for cancer treatment, it, there are many areas which we can target in regard to prevention and environmentalists are also key in, in that advocacy and approach. So, so the risk factors cut across. If you look at the section on diabetes, hypertension, mental health, these are the same risk factors that we're talking about. So diet, we need to have to have a proper diet, avoidance of smoking, alcohol, having good physical activity, and uh, some environmental pollutants, which are still being discovered, some of them. And in that case, then, would reduce the burden of cancer. And in regard to diagnosis, we really have to look at the cells in a microscope. And the only way we can get that is to get something called a biopsy. So without a biopsy, it's impossible to tell a growth, whether it is a normal growth, or an abnormal growth. And uh, when you go to hospital, you can get some investigations like an X-ray, can show an abnormality, or a CT scan that will show a growth. But it's, or even during surgery, they can find an abnormal growth, which needs to be taken to the lab to be analyzed by a pathologist. And then you can say this is a cancer. So once that diagnosis is made, then they would have to stage it just to know is it just in a local place, is it only, for example, in the breast, or is it going to other places? because there are various ways it can spread either through the blood or the lymph nodes. 
and each stage, the earlier the stage, the better the treatment and the likelihood that you can have cure. So each cancer really want to know the stage, and as you people go to their doctors, they will talk to them about the various stages. It's stage one, two, three. Most cancers go up to four, and uh, each have their own. Sometimes different it can be two A, two B, just some subclasses depending on the extent that the tumor has been. Now that staging is important because it 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 is tied closely to the next stage of treatment, and the major treatment options have their three. So you can have surgery. If it's just a small mass, for example, in the cervix can be removed. And uh, I have had a patient who had a cervix removed nine years ago, in 2010, and she's healed of, of that cancer because she went for screening, it was early. So at surgery can be curative in some instances. But there are times when it has grown beyond areas where the surgeon can reach. So then in that case, we can do surgery and give drugs called chemotherapy that now would reduce spread of the multiplication, as you said, cancer is abnormal multiplication of cells. So chemotherapy can also be used. And then the third modality is uh, radiotherapy. We are some radiation or x-rays are targeted to those cells that are growing abnormally to like, kill them. Yeah. So I think that's what I would say in regard to the risk factors, diagnosis, how we try and get a biopsy and then staging. Sometimes we need other investigations, CT scans to see has it gone, for example, from the lung into the bone? Okay. And if it has gone from the lung to the bone, it's called metastasis. It doesn't mean that it's a new cancer in the bone. It's still the, the same one, but it has moved and through the blood, through the lymph and each have its own. Yeah. So the instances where treatment may just be palliative, meaning you're not aiming for cure, but you're aiming for just comfortable life. So it's also important to know that palliative care or comfort care is an important part of cancer care. No patient with cancer should have to be in pain. I think it's unacceptable for them to be in pain. They should work with their doctors.